Greetings, everyone. I don't know, my Facebook can't come on. Greetings. Oh, I'm, I am on. Praise y'all. I'm sorry. I didn't even know I was on. That's his name today. We bless y'all for everything that he's doing. Praise y'all for everyone today. Shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. We're on a little late, later than, than normal. Praise y'all. We give him glory. We give him honor. And we give him praise today. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all the praise. Praise y'all. Hallelujah. We thank him for everything that he's doing, everything he's going to do. We magnify him in every essence of the word. Welcome again to Savage School Live. Hallelujah. Welcome to Savage School Live. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. We say Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all the praises. We magnify his name. Hallelujah. Glory and honor belongs to him today. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom, everybody, today. Hallelujah. Praise his name today. He is almighty, yeah. Glory to his name right now. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be his holy name today. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Live, y'all. Welcome to Sabbath School Live, YouTube. Welcome to Sabbath School Live. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for your loving kindness that you have bestowed upon us today, Father. Father, we magnify you in every essence of the word, praying that your will and your way be done all day, every day, and no other kind of way, Father. We lift your name up on high. You are the most high, Yah. You're the Elohim, the El Shaddai, the real high. The Tiskanu. You're the almighty today. And we praise your name today. As we get started in this word today, we decrease, Father, that you may increase. We ask that you move today, not by might, nor by power, but by the Rarak Hakadash, the Ruach Hakadash. Hallelujah. We bless Yah for everything that you're doing. We bless you for everything you're going to do. Father, lift us up where we belong, where eagles fly and the mountains high. Let your will and your way be done today. And we will this morning, this afternoon, be so careful to give you praise, give you glory, and give you honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise Yah today. Praise Yah, praise Yahweh, praise Yahuwah, praise Yahweh, praise Yah today. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Um, we didn't get a chance to put the uh, topic of what we're going to teach on today because uh, we were running a little bit behind schedule, but we bless Yah today for being back on with you today. Praise Yah. Uh, we were a little bit. We were a little bit um, dealing with some things, but we praise y'all. We standing on our post today. Praise y'all. Giving y'all glory. Giving y'all honor. Thanking y'all for everybody that's with us today. Praise y'all. We say Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to everybody today. Praise y'all. Hallelujah. So happy to see you all in the land of the living. Praise be unto y'all. Yah is still worthy to be praised. Oh, yes, he is. Praise Yah. Shabbat Shalom, um, Lady Carol, uh, our sister Don, to our minister Chico, to our sister Rachel, to all of the people of Yah. We magnify you today in Yah. Praise Yah. Yah is great and greatly to be praised. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. Thank Yah again for everything that he's going to do. I know y'all is going to do something special today. I'm looking, I'm, ex I'm expecting something special in the word today because, you know, the adversary is wroth, again, as we always say, and he's out to make war with the remnant of the seed, which keep the commandments of Yah and have the testimonies of Yahweh Hamashiach. And we know that there is a shift 
in the atmosphere. There's a shift in the atmosphere. Today we're going to deal with the um, important study sub subject called when your when, W-H-E-N, when your when, W-H-E-N, becomes when, W-H-E-N, your faith will make you whole. When your when becomes when, your faith through the word will make you whole. Somebody said, well, why are we going to talk about or teach on that today? We're going to deal with that today because we're in difficult times. Uh, we're in prophetic times where people are not adhering to the word like they should be. And in fact, in times like this, we need the word more than anything. The problem is we don't understand how to matriculate or how to calculate the word when to use the word. And, and, and it's important that we understand that when your when becomes when, your faith through the word will make you whole. And the reason why we say your faith through the word will make you whole is because faith comes by hearing, shamai, and shamai hearing by the word of your house. So, so, so we have to understand that. And, and, and when is something, boy, because when will come upon you and you will least expect it. You will least expect it. In order to uh, 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 defeat any adversary or opposition, you have to understand that, that, that the strategy, or you have to understand that there are strategies and points of strategies you must have in order to uh, maintain attack and defeat the adversary. Maintain, attack, and defeat the adversary. These are the things that we have to understand because these are the things that causes when, when when comes upon us, a lot of times we fold because we don't understand what to do when your when becomes when. In other words, let's, let's look at a little definition first. Let's look at a little definition. Uh, Little definition first. Let's look at this thing very carefully because this is some deep stuff here. I want y'all to really look at this because you have to understand the adversary is attacking us. He's attacking our homes. He's attacking our families. He's attacking our marriages. He's attacking. And not only that, but he's attacking the seed of Yasra Al. See, we keep referring to this uh, awakening, awakening, awakening. When awakening means nothing if there's no rock. HaKadosh. There's no Holy Spirit. So when we're dealing with awakening, we have to understand we're dealing from the perspective of the Rarak HaKadosh. Shabbat Shalom, Apostle. Rarak HaKadosh. So when we're dealing with Yah, uh, uh, there's a win that takes place in our life. Win. And a lot of times, we don't deal with win. We always talk about awakening. We always talk about this. We always talk about that. But we don't deal with the win because win is imperative because win is what Yahushua, Yahweh gave to Kiefer. Win is when is what Jonah came to the point of. When you come to the point of when, and it's imperative, hallelujah, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, uh, 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 um, nephew, Minister Darush, hallelujah. We have to understand that we are at the point of when, 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 when. We have to understand when is something because of the dispensation of time we're living in, we're living in a time of when. When, when, what do you mean by when? Let's look at this. Let me, let me, can, I, can I take my time today? I know y'all, some of y'all may have to go to other places, but if y'all allow me to take my time, give me like about a good 45 minutes. I promise y'all, I'm gonna give this to you and it's gonna be so on point. You're gonna be like, wow. Thank you, y'all. Hello. Let's look at the first one. Let's look at the word when. The, the word when, the word when, the, the word when, W-H-E-N, because the, I didn't get a chance to put it on. I'll put it on later. Uh, uh, the, what we're dealing with today is when your win, when your win becomes when your faith through the king, your faith through the word of Yah will make you whole. When your win becomes when your faith through the word of Yahweh. We'll make y'all. So let's look at the thing. The word when. Let's look at this word, word when. Y'all give me a minute. I'm gonna really lay this thing and we're gonna literally give it out as Yah is giving it to us. Praise Yah. When W H E N W H E N W H E N. The word when means at what time? It's an adverb. At what time? In other words, when did you last see him? 
or at or on which, referring to Saturday or the Shabbat, is the day when I worship. When, 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 when. It's also a conjunction. It's a conjunction. I hate all this stuff coming up on my thing. Hold on, y'all excuse me just one second. So I got all this stuff popping up on my screen and this stuff don't pop up until I start teaching. Let me start again. The word when, the word when is defined as at what time, it's an adverb, at what time, or it's at or on which referring to a time or circumstance. In other words, the Shabbat is, the Shabbat is the time that I worship, or the Shabbat is the day is when I worship. On the Shabbat, on Saturday or on the Shabbat is when I worship. So, so it's dealing at, at or during that time, or it's at what time. So in other words, when your when becomes when, at that time, or when, or at which that time comes upon you. That when comes upon you, because there's going to come a time in life, especially during this dispensation of time we're at now, where vaccinations are going forth. There's so much talk and rhetoric of, 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 of uh, mandatory vaccinations. Uh, uh, when your win becomes when, watch this, y'all. When your win becomes when, watch this, y'all. When your win becomes when, it's when your faith will make you whole. When, when, at that time, at that time, there's going to become a win as we walk this walk with Yahweh. There's going to come a time, a win, when you're going to have to decide whether you're going to take the mark of the beast or you're going to take, hallelujah, or die for the witness of the glad tidings. When your win becomes win, your faith will make you whole. Again, the word when is defined at, at what time is an adverb. At what time? For example, when did you last see him or them? Or when was the last time you prayed? When was the last time you sought Yah concerning spiritual affairs? When, 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 at what time? When did you do it? Praise Yah. Watch this. The other one is a conjunction. The word when is a conjunction. At or doing the time. In other words, in other words, in other words, uh, uh, I come and I teach on Shabbat. Shabbat is when I teach. So we have to understand when we're dealing with when, because guess what? Some of us may deal with sickness. Some of us may deal with things that will put us in a position where only our faith can make us whole and get us out of. So that's why we're dealing with the topic today. When, W-H-E-N, your when, W-H-E-N, becomes when, W-H-E-N, your faith will make you whole. Hallelujah. I feel your presence on y'all. Hallelujah. 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 Have, have, have anybody ever had uh, something come up upon you unexpectedly? Have anyone ever had uh, anything rise up against you unexpectedly, hallelujah, and it sort of knocked you off guard, praise Yah. Has anything ever had you so discombobulated sometimes where it literally challenged your belief system? It challenged where you were in Yah. It challenged where you are in Yah, hallelujah. And this is where we need to understand. We have to understand that, 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 that there's winds there's winds that are coming, hallelujah, uh, uh, upon us. There's winds that will come upon us and it's going to require faith to make us whole. That's why it's important that we get into a uh, study class. That's why it's important that we get into the word. Why? Because faith comes by hearing, hallelujah, and hearing by the word of Yahweh. In other words, you cannot hear without a teacher and he cannot teach except he be sent. 
So we have to understand that, that, that we are dealing with uh, winds, winds. There's winds that will come upon us. There are winds that will arise upon us. Hallelujah. The thing is, the question is to ask, what will you, hallelujah, do when these winds come upon you? Will you fold? Will you fail? Will you turn back? Or will you say, I'm going to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of Yah? When your wind comes, when your wind comes, your faith will make you whole. When your wind becomes when, your faith will become, it's going to marinate on it. I know some of y'all are getting it now. Some of it's marinating on your, in your Ruach right now. We have to understand that Yah is trying to position us for this latter day attack of the adversary. Yah is trying to position us for this latter day move of the beast power that will be manifested. Yah is trying to prepare us, our mindsets, for things such as mandatory vaccinations. Yah is trying to prepare us for things such as one world religion, Yah is trying to prepare us, hallelujah, for things such as our homes being attacked, our marriages being attacked, our friendships being attacked, hallelujah. Yah is trying to prepare us, hallelujah. Now watch this, y'all. Let's look at scripture. Go with me to the book of, the book of Yonah, the book of Yonah, the book of Jonah, Yonah, the book of Yonah. The second chapter. Let me show y'all something. Because there's some winds that's going to come. I got some people that's dealing with sickness right now. I was talking to someone on last night. She told me that she was dealing with sickness and it came upon her. Hallelujah. It came upon her unexpectedly. And I'm talking about this COVID thing. Hallelujah. Has anyone ever had something come upon you? So again, I asked unexpectedly and it knocked you up off your feet. She was telling me how one day she was fine. The next thing she felt like she had the flu. The next thing she felt like she couldn't breathe. Hallelujah. And, and, and so, so, so when, hallelujah, came in the mix. Again, when your wind becomes when, your faith must kick in and make you whole through the word. Praise Yah. So she said, hallelujah. We have to understand that when, 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 when deals with the perspective of the unexpected. Hallelujah. When, when, I, 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 when, 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 when comes on you when you least expect it. Huh? In other words, things happen in your home. Things happen in your marriage. Things happen amongst your children. And you, want it, you don't expect it. Hallelujah. Things that can devastate you. If it hasn't happened, it's going to happen. If this happened, it's going to happen again. This is what we call when. Again, the word when means at what time or during that time. What are you going to do? Are you going to fold? Or are you going to give up? Or are you going to allow the faith that was given unto us by contention of the saints? Oh, believers, are we going to allow the faith to kick in through the word and make us whole? Let's look at this thing in the book of Jonah. Let me just let's, let's look at this first, and then we're going to go down. We're going to go to, uh, we're gonna go to uh, the next scripture after this. Jonah, the second chapter, uh, Minister Chico. Jonah, the second chapter, and uh, verse uh, number, we're going to look, let's start at verse number uh, three. Verse number three. Verse number three. Jonah, two and three. Show y'all something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I bless y'all. I bless y'all. Because I know that he is our redeemer and that our redeemer lives. I bless y'all. In the midst of turbulence, in the midst of tribulation, in the midst of much persecution, I bless y'all. Hallelujah. When your wind becomes when your faith through the word will make you whole. Now let's look at this. Let's look at this very, very, very carefully. Let's look at this thing. Because we know the story of 
Jonah, Jonah in the belly of the well. We know that he was sent on a mission to go to Nineveh. But in the midst of going to Nineveh, he left and went to Tarshish. To Tarshish. He went to Tarshish. And the equivalency of the distance between the two is like the most high telling you to go to California and you begin to head towards New York. In other words, that was the equivalency of the two. The equivalency of the two. Uh, we have to understand that 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 when was a factor in this because again he didn't want to go to Tarshish. Ah, y'all, excuse me. He didn't want to go to Tarshish because he knew that if he went to, I mean, he didn't want to go to Nineveh because he knew that if he had gone to Nineveh, he was going in the midst of headhunters. He was going in the midst of people that were savages. He was going in the midst of people that would not respect him in his Yah state. Hallelujah. He knew that if he was going, and, and, and I, I understand that because something happened to me over this past week that shook me to the core of my soul that I didn't want to teach. I didn't want to teach. I didn't want to teach. Praise Yah. But, 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 but we have to understand when, hallelujah, your when, Becomes when your faith will make you whole. Your faith will take you over and beyond the expectations and the measures of what's planted before you. When your win becomes when. When will happen at a time that you least expect it. It will happen at a time when you feel like, listen, I finally got it together. And then bam, something happened. Bam, this happened. Praise God. It will happen in a time, hallelujah. It will happen, hallelujah, in your home. It will happen in your marriage. It will happen in your health, hallelujah. When your win becomes when, your faith will make you whole. Hallelujah. Shout my glory. Your faith will make you whole. Hallelujah. It will take you, hallelujah, beyond your pain. It will take you beyond your situation. It will take you beyond your circumstance. Hallelujah. Your faith will make you whole through the word. Hallelujah. 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 So let's look at this thing very carefully. Hallelujah. Y'all excuse me. Bless his holy name. When your win becomes win, your faith through the word will make you whole. Now, Yona. Did not want to go into that land of Nineveh. Nineveh was a land that was full of headhorn hunters and savages. And, and, and not only did he not want to go, but he didn't want to go because he knew the mindset of Yahweh. He knew that, listen, even if I go in there and I proclaim judgment in there, you will yet, hallelujah, forgive them. Hallelujah. How many of us ever had something come upon us, praise Yah, where we had to make a decision? We didn't know which way to turn. We didn't know which way to go, but we realized that i got to make this decision. Hallelujah. In other words, in other words something comes upon you and you got to either listen, either you fold or it makes you. Either it makes you or it breaks you. Praise Yah. In other words, when, when comes in at every unexpected times. It seemed like, it seemed like listen, it seemed, have you ever had times where you couldn't feel like, listen, I finally got caught up financially. Now, here comes something out of the blue. Hallelujah. When your win becomes when your faith, hallelujah, begins to make your, let's look at this in the book of Jonah. The second chapter, verse number three says this. For you had cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas and the floods, they compassed about me. All your billows and your waves passed over me. Has anything ever happened in your life where you feel like or you have felt like it was just too much for you? Hallelujah. Where you have felt like that I just can't take it anymore. Where you have felt like, yeah, I can't do this anymore. Hallelujah. Have anybody ever had anything come upon them? Praise y'all. Where it felt like the floods of life was almost choking the life up out of you. Hallelujah. That's called when. That's called when. That's called when. At that time of, hallelujah, adversity. At that time of, listen, I don't know which way to go. I don't know what to do. Praise y'all. I'm at that point in my life right now.
like that. The floods is compassing about. Hallelujah. The seas is all raging. The billows are hot. Look what he said in verse number four. Then I said, I am cast out of your sight. Watch this, y'all. Yet, I look again toward your holy temple. Hallelujah. In other words, when wind comes upon you, the time is not to pay attention to your surroundings. The time is not to pay attention to what you're going through. The time is to look to the hills from whence coming your help. Hebrews 12 and 2 said, looking unto Yahushua, Yahushua, the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. In other words, when things get so rough to the point you don't know which way to turn, which way to go, it's not to turn to the left, it's not to turn to the right, but it's to look up. Look up. Look up. Looking unto your house, Yahushua, Yahushua, the author and the finisher. Now watch the show. The word look means to give your attention to one thing at the expense of another. Give your attention to uh, one thing of greater importance at the expense of something else. When will bring you to that point where your only source of survival is to look up into the temple. And I say up because the temple of Yahweh, the throne of Yahweh is upward. So look up. Your redemption draw off now. Now watch this. He said, I look again towards the holy temple. The waters, verse 5, compass me about. Even to the soul, the depth closed round about me. The weeds were wrapped about my head. Now, when some of us have been dealing with sickness, and it seems like we just can't get healed. Some of us are dealing with financial situations. And it seems like we just can't get to that point of climbing over the hill. Hallelujah. Some of us are dealing with things in our marriages. Hallelujah. And it seems like it's just not changing. Oh, glory. Some of us are dealing with things in our homes with our children. And it seems like the more you pray, the more things are happening. Hallelujah. But you got to look up. Look up. Look up. You can't keep your head down low. Because if you keep your head down low, the wind, W-H-E-N, y'all excuse me just one second. The wind the W-H-E-N will drown you. You will not make it. Bless his name. Hallelujah. So look at the thing very carefully. Verse number six. He said, I went down to the bottoms of the mountain. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet have you brought up my life from Corruption. Oh, Yahweh. In other words, even though you may be in the midst of your wind, if you look up, he'll be your present help in the time of trouble. If you look up, he'll be your redeemer. If you look up, he'll be your savior. He said, besides me, there is no other savior. Watch this, y'all. Verse number seven. When W-H-E-N, when, W-H-E-N, my soul fainted within me. Guess what? I remembered Yahweh. And my prayer, hallelujah, came in unto me, unto you, into your holy temple. In other words, guess what? When wind comes upon you, 
at the time, uh, 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 when I was, like I said, I was talking to one of uh, uh, the, 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 the um, sister's mother, Mother uh, Williams, last night, and she was telling me that 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 she didn't understand how this COVID came upon her. She didn't understand. She said she know she's been doing this, doing that, but she works in a hospital, and she said she didn't realize that the thing came upon her until it literally was on her, and she had the COVID. She said, but what kept me alive. What kept me going, praise God, was the antibiotics, but it was also the ability, hallelujah, to come into the presence of Yah. So what are you saying? I'm saying that when your wind becomes wind, your faith comes in and it makes you whole. And what it does is it takes you from your circumstance. It takes you from your situations and it begins to catapult you, hallelujah, spew you out up into an upward measure, hallelujah, into your deliverance. Praise y'all today. Hallelujah. Into your deliverance. Praise y'all. Hallelujah. So, so when you're in the midst of your wind, it's not time to murmur. It's not time to complain. It's not time to argue. It's not time to fight. But it's time to look up. It's time to look up. Because our redemption, hallelujah, it draws now. It's time to look up to the hills from whence come our help. Our help come from Yahweh. He will, he shall give us what we need. Watch this, y'all. Watch this, watch this. There's some powerful stuff right here. Watch this. Reason why you begin to look up is because you forsake you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, pain I feel in my soul right now. The pain I feel in my ruach, my spirit right now. Guess what? That pain means nothing. Hallelujah. Why? Because we looked up. We're looking up. Hallelujah. Last night we didn't teach. We wasn't going to teach today. But y'all said, get up out that bed. Stand upon your feet, gird up your loins like a man, and allow this anointing that I placed in you to speak to my people. So, so I stood up, hallelujah. I looked up, first of all, and as I looked up, I began to stand up. See, see, when, when you look up, hallelujah, look will pull you up to a stand-up position, prostrate and stand up. So now, guess what? As I stand up, all of a sudden, now the deliverance came, the deliverance, came, the strength came. Hallelujah. Now watch this, y'all. Watch this, watch, this, watch, this, watch. This. I forgot about when I got on. Me. I forgot about me. When your win becomes win, and when the faith begins to kick in through the word, you begin to forget about you. Let me say that again. You begin to forget about you. Hallelujah. So many times we going through, oh, poor me, oh, woe is me, oh, oh, I'm hurting, I'm in pain, oh, oh. But guess what? When you look up, hallelujah, when you look up and your women come with, all of a sudden faith begins to elevate you up into a higher level. Now watch this, verse number eight. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercies. What are you saying, my God? The wind is a lying vanity. The wind is only something to get your attention. It's not something to hold on to. Huh? It's not something to hold on to. It's not something to say, listen, okay, this is it. I'm not going to make it. I'm sick. I can't get well. My finances is not right. I can't get well. No, the wind is something that's only to get your attention. Hallelujah. To get to the resource. To, to forsake your vanity. A lot of times, we're in position that we're in because we're trying to fix it. We're trying to do it. We're trying to be, praise God, when Yahweh said, listen, look up. Let go. And let me. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercies. But I will sacrifice unto you. Hallelujah. Got up this morning, had two hours of sleep, stressed, in tears, two hours of sleep. Y'all showed me something that I didn't really want to see. He showed me something that I thought I could handle, but I couldn't handle it. And it hurt me. It disturbed me. 3.35 a.m. this morning. Watch this, y'all. So, 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 so I laid there. I got up briefly for the prayer line. I laid there. I was upset. I was angry. I was hurt. I was crying. And y'all spoke to me. And said, let it go. Let go. And let me. You don't mention it. You don't talk about it. 
but look up to me. Let go. Hallelujah. And let me. I am the problem solver. I am the problem fixer. Let go and let me. In other words, this win was something that I didn't expect. I reminded of a time when I was a millionaire. Back in the two early 2000s. Had two car lots. And I remember when the recession hit in 2007 and 2008 in Charlotte, North Carolina. Lost everything. Lost my car lots, my car lots, my dealerships, two dealerships. Lost my clothing business. Lost my cars. Lost my houses. Lost my jewelry. And at that time, lost my wife. And I didn't know which way to go. I didn't know which way to turn. But y'all gave me, hallelujah, a word. Be steadfast. Unmovable. Always abounding in my work. Because your labor is not in vain. Church had, had to shut down the church. My assembly, the assembly we had in Charlotte. Didn't know which way to go. When had hit me. When at that time. Of disparity. But guess what? The word began to kick in. My faith began to make me whole. I walked around in sackcloth and ashes. Those who I helped. Those who I gave money to. Those who I helped their children go to college. Those who I, they, all of a sudden now, they were looking at me like I was a bum on the street. When your win becomes when? Had come to the point of suicide. Had come to the point where I didn't want to live no more. Hallelujah. But, 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 but the word kicked in. Hallelujah. The word kicked in. Hallelujah. David said I was in a horrible pit. But I cried unto Yah. Hallelujah. I began to look up. I cried unto Yah. And he heard my cry. And he picked me up out of that horrible pit. And placed me upon a rock to stand. When your win becomes win. Don't think, if you haven't had a win, keep on living. If you haven't been in a crossroad, keep on living. When your win becomes, Jonah said, listen, when my soul fainted, you know, when I got tired, when I got tired of battling it, when I got tired of, of, of trying to fix it, when I got tired of it, watch this, when I got tired, where well, I couldn't do nothing about it. I needed a higher source. I needed a deeper power. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered Yahweh. I remember learning how to pray in the congregation. I remember, hallelujah, learning how to call upon the name of Yah. I remember, hallelujah, these who the earth is his and the fullness thereof and they that dwell. I remember, hallelujah, him that is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we may ask and think according to his power which works, hallelujah, in us. I remember. And my prayer came in unto you and into your temple. In other words, I realized that I had prayed and I realized you didn't forsake me. I realized you didn't leave me. You didn't let me go. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. But when your win became win, hallelujah, all of a sudden, when you couldn't do, when you can't do nothing about it, when you can't do anything about it, all of a sudden now, faith kicks in. And it makes you whole. Now, let me show y'all something with this. Let me show y'all something because I feel like teaching today. Praise y'all. I understand this. Said He said, they that observe lying vanities forsake their mercy. In other words, I got to forget about what I'm going through. Forget about the pain. Forget about the hurt. Forget about the things that I'm dealing with right now. So we have to forget about these things and, and somehow muster up enough strength to give sacrifice. But at the time when Yonah gave his sacrifice, paid his vow of praise. Yahuwah heard him. And that that had him captive had to let him go. <laughs> now watch this, y'all. Watch this. What a horrible thing for a man to be inside of 
a fish. What a horrible thing for a man to be inside of something that he can't do nothing about. What a horrible position to be in where you can't fix it at all. Nothing you do, nothing you say can fix it. Only Yah can change. What a what a what a position to be in. Huh? Because y'all know how mankind, mankind are. We want power. But watch, 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 watch this. Watch this, y'all. What should have been a 40-day journey. <laughs> ended up being a three day and three night experience. So what should have taken him 40 days to get to, huh? See, most, so, some, so many times we don't see the blessing in the midst of our hurt. Because when our win becomes win, a lot of times we murmur, a lot of times we complain, a lot of times we fall out, a lot of times we question y'all. Y'all, why did you allow me to get here? Why, why, why y'all? Why me y'all? Why me y'all? When y'all is letting you know, listen, your win becoming win is letting you know, listen, why not you? So what should have took taken 40 days and 40 nights ended up being a three-day and three night journey. Because <laughs> the scripture says that Yonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights. So shall the son of man be in the heart of the earth. So we know it was three days and three nights that he was inside of that whale. That inside of that big fish. Watch this. So what should have been 40 days. Hallelujah. What should have been 40 days only ended up being three days and three nights. We so what a lot of times when we run. That's why he said. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercies because a lot of times we so caught up in us. We so caught up in how we feel. We so caught up in how we believe and we forget that Yah is doing the work. Hallelujah. Remember Yah is a sovereign of expedition. It doesn't take him all day and all night to do what needs to be done. So 40 days and 40 nights to man ended up only being three days and three nights unto Yah. He expedited him. So, so what, what are you saying? When your win becomes win, don't murmur. Don't complain. But allow Yah through faith to make you whole. Allow Yah through faith to make you whole. People have been dealing with COVID that I know that I'm close to. People have been dealing, bless you, Minister Chip. Hallelujah. Good to see you, little Ock, my little brother. People have been dealing with COVID that I'm close to. And, 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 and I'm noticing that those that have faith, those that, that listen, listen, they're saying, listen, I, I, I refuse to allow this sickness. I refuse to allow this situation to hold me fast. I refuse to allow this pain that I'm in to hold me back. I have to continue on. You can't allow your vanity of your situations to derail your destiny. What if, what if Jonah would have gave up? What if Jonah would have given up? Huh? What if he would have said, listen, ah, I'm, I'm, in the, I'm in the pits of hell. Weeds is all around me. We can only imagine what the smell was. Hallelujah. We can only imagine what the environment was. Teach today, y'all. Hallelujah. We can only imagine what he was dealing with. Hallelujah. You know what y'all remember this? When you're in the midst of your wind. When you're in the midst of your situation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yaha, for the deliverance through this word this morning, this afternoon. Thank you for the deliverance, Yahweh, because you need, I needed deliverance and you delivered me. Hallelujah. In other words, my situation, my, 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 my destination is far more greater than my situation. Let me say that again. Write that down, Minister Chico. Our destination is far more important than our situation. Our destination is far more greater, far more important than our situation. Yah is not concerned about the situation. He's more concerned about you getting to the destination. Teach today, Yah. Hallelujah. He wasn't concerned about Yonah being inside of that belly, 
of the fish, the big fish. He was more concerned that Yoda don't let go, that his faith kicks in and say, yeah, you're worthy. Yeah, you're able. He was more concerned about Yoda allowing his faith to kick in. And his faith kicked in when Yoda said, listen, they that observe. Lying families. In other words, they to keep looking at their situations. They to keep looking at their present state of being, their present state of mind. They to keep looking around and paying attention to what's down here and not looking up to the hills from whence come their help. They to keep looking at the situation, not understanding that Yah has destination for you. They that observe lying vanities, forsake their own mercies. In other words, Yah ain't even having mercy on you. To get you out because you more, you have made a deity, a God into your circumstance, out of your circumstance. You're so clinging to and so praising to your situation when Yahweh wants you to come, hallelujah, out of this thing and get to your destination. Again, a 40 day and 40 night trip ended up only being three days. In three nights, there is an expedition that Yahweh places in place. Y'all don't, y'all don't, y'all don't care nothing about your situation. He cares about your destination, and that's why, in between your win becoming win, you have to allow your faith to kick in and make you whole. You got to determine in your heart. You got to determine in your mind. I don't care how bad it looks. I'm coming out of this. Hallelujah. I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care how hurtful it feels. I'm coming out of this. I don't care what it looks like to the left or to the right. Take that in right now. I'm coming out of this. Hallelujah. I'm coming out of this. I don't care how what feeling I have. Guess what? I'm coming out of this. Y'all's preparing us for this great destination. I don't care what we're dealing with. I'm coming out of this. Hallelujah. So in the midst of my win, I will proclaim, I will make it plainly known. In the midst of this, I'm coming out of this. And guess what? Because I'm coming out of this, guess what? It is well. I'm coming out of this. It is well. Hallelujah. I'm coming out of this. It is well with my soul. I'm coming out of this. My faith is starting to make me whole. Uh, Even though I don't see it, I yet see it through the rock Hakadosh. I see, hallelujah, I'm coming out of this, hallelujah. Some of y'all need things. Some of y'all are in need of some things, some cars, some good, some some, some other things. But, But guess what? We coming out of this. We're in a position. We're in a, we're in a position. We're in a, in, a, in a society now where there is a threat to the political, the threat to the economical buildup of the land that we live in. Huh? We're in a land where there are amendments with, that do not apply to us. Huh? We're in the midst of a land where parts of these amendments say that we're not even a full man. But guess what? We're coming out of this. Our destination is far more greater than the situation. And he's preparing us by faith. He's preparing us for the destination. The preparation is making room for the destination. He's preparing us by faith. And the faith can only come by hearing. And the hearing has to come by the word of Yahweh. I'm coming out of this. We're coming out of this. We're coming out of this. Hallelujah. 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 We're coming out of this. Please understand the adversary is sending forth attacks. These attacks are designed to take away your ability to please Yah. And that ability to please Yah comes through faith. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please Yahweh. For he that come to Yahweh, come to Yah, must know that he is, must know that he is Rapha. Again, some of us have dealt with COVID. Know that he is Rapha, Yah that heal us. Know that he is Rohai. He is our shepherd and we shall not want. 
teach today, y'all. He is, hallelujah, shalom. He is our peace in the midst of confusion. Know that he is. Know that he is, hallelujah, uh, a Tessaboa. He is the sovereign Yah of hosts. Know that he is El El Yah. Hallelujah. He is the Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. Knowing that he is Yahuwah, Yahweh, Yah, Yasha, Yahweh Sha, and so on. I'm just covering all the names in case, case so yeah, sure. all the ones in case you in case you get caught up on dialects. Knowing that he is. Most of all, he is Yah. It is he that rides upon the high places. He is Yah. He is most of all, Aya, Asha, Aya. He is the great I am. I will be. I shall be. I can be. I am that I am. I am Aya, Asha, Aya. Know that he is. Watch this, y'all. Know that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently, consistently seek him. When your win becomes win, your faith will make you whole. Faith will kick in through the word. So now we look up and we go to him in faith. We go to him because we know that he is and that he is a reward of them, which Dylan says they seek him. Understand this faith is a bonding, pleasing element. It reveals Yah. It reveals his love. It reveals his loyalty. It rectifies any situation to those who possess and use it. Remember Abraham, 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 Abraham became the father of all nations because of his use of faith, which the one that is, El Shaddai, the one that is, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh Shah, etc. He was in fact called a friend of Yahweh because of his faith. When your win becomes win, you have the man who is the man. You have the great I am, the Ayah Asha Ayah, always on your side. And that's why the scripture says in Romans, if Yahweh be for us, who could be against us? When the wind comes upon us as the wind, huh? If Yahweh be for us, who could be against us? If Yahweh is for us, what could come up against us? If Yahweh be our strength, who can deny us? Go with me to Luke. Luca 22, and I'm almost finished, y'all. I wasn't going to be long today. Luke 22, show y'all something. Hallelujah. <laughs> I know somebody said, this is getting good. This is good. Praise y'all. Luke 22. Luke 22. And uh, we're going to look at verses uh, 31 through 33, uh, Minister Chico. Luke 22. Verses 31 through 33. I hope this is helping somebody today. Look what he said here. We have to understand the environment. We have to understand what's going on. And we can't be, hallelujah, and deny it. Y'all excuse me, I'm sorry. My nose is running real bad. <laughs> we have to understand the environment. And we have to understand what we're dealing with. It's imperative to understand this because if we don't understand what's going on or if we are in denial, that's when we become the most susceptible of being destroyed by the wind. You know, I think about it. I've had three uncles die from the youngest, the one that I'm older than, that I was older than, to my oldest, 
who was 97 years old. I've lost my God sister. And on early this week, lost my brother, my Yah brother. Within the last three or four months, my win came because it was unexpected. I did not expect it. It brought a feeling on me of something that I could not explain. For the first time in my life, I felt the effects of death. I felt the sorrow of death. Normally I'm either doing uh, eulogies or so on, but this time I felt that. So the wind came in. The wind came in to the point where I begin to question this most high sovereign Yah. Watch this, y'all. Now, when the wind comes in, your faith will make you whole, and it makes you whole because the word, the word begin to kick in and make sense to us. Praise Yah. So watch this, y'all. In Luke 21, 22 and 31 through 33, Yahweh Shah said, Simon, Simon, listen to this, y'all. Simon, Simon, behold, Hasatan have desired to have you that he may sent you as wheat. So, the first thing we have, must understand is that the attack that the adversary has for us is that it will sift us as we. In other words, it, 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 everything that we're going to deal with, everything we deal with, is to discombobulate us to the perspective of we have no strength to get through it or no strength to make it over. Huh? So in other words, it's got to be something that's so unexpected that it will literally take the breath up out of you. Hallelujah. Many people that I spoke to concerning the uh, COVID, those that have received the COVID, praise y'all, um, and, and had dealt with the COVID, praise y'all. Many of those said that, listen, all of a sudden I was breathing, and then the next minute I couldn't breathe, praise y'all. So, 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 so the wind comes upon us to the point where it takes the breath out of us. It's almost like getting punched in the stomach or punched in the side, hallelujah, unexpectedly. And, and, and this is the attack that high Satan is placed or has in place for us as his chosen. Remember, he's wroth with us. He's out to make war with the remnant of the seed, which keep the commandments of Yahweh and have the testimonies of Yahweh Shai. And we know Revelation 19 and 10 says the testimonies of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. So he's upset with us because we teach prophecy. I couldn't understand why I was dealing with what I'm dealing with. And sometimes, guess what? The only way he can really knock that wind out of you, he got to come through somebody that you love. He got to come through that closest person. He got to come through your health. He got to come through your sin. He, he comes in different ways. Praise God. And this is why we says, when your wind become when your faith. Now, now watch this. What wind also, and I thank you, um, uh, Lady lady Adrian, praise God for that, because I was going to go there in a few seconds. What wind also does is it establishes Watch this. What type of ground you are. When the wind, W-H-E-N, establishes what type of ground you are. Huh? Are you stony ground? Huh? Are you a ground of thorns and thistles? Or are you good ground? One stony ground, it came in. When the word came in on them, watch this, the word came in, the seed of the word came in, and, 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 and they continued, and all of a sudden, when the cares of this life came in, when and that's why you can't be married and be a weakling. 
You can't be married and be a quitter. You can't be married and be a cheater. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? You can't be married and be a quitter. You can't be married and be a cheater. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. And, you, and, and guess what? If you married to somebody that's a quitter and a cheater, guess what? That's that win. Because eventually, that, that cheating going to come out. Eventually, that quitting on the marriage is going to come out. Watch this, y'all. Hallelujah. Watch this. So, so we have to understand that when your win becomes win. Hallelujah. Because it can happen. You be married and happy one day. Next minute, your spouse leave you, go on and cheat on you. Or next minute, they just give up on you and say, I don't want you no more. I leave you. I'm leaving you. When your win becomes win. That's the show. Satan's whole point of attack is to take the win. Up out of you. You know why the wind you want to knock the wind out of you? Because the wind is what is called the rara or the rara, which is the breath I teach the of Yahweh. So, so the wind is designed to take away the breath that Yahweh has put inside of you. The rara or the rua, either rara or rua, rara or rua both means breath. Now rua means spirit. Rarak means spirit. So, so when the, the point of the attack, y'all, is that the adversary comes in and take the rara, the rara, away from taking the breath out of us. So it comes upon and it knocks us, it hits us so hard. And sometimes that pain is so unbearable that the only thing you can do is fall to your knees and pray or fall down on your knees and give up. If you fall down to your knees and pray, your win is becoming win, and now the faith is kicking in. And it's gonna make you all. Watch this, y'all. I feel like I feel the feel rock hockey dash. So now, 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 so now. So now. now scripture says, Simon, Simon, behold, pay attention. Look around you. I realize. All the things that I've been going through over the last couple of months, out here on Facebook, being embarrassed on Facebook, dealing with different ones that I love, being hurt, even my own oldest son cursing me out and making a mockery of me, mockery of me on Facebook. All this hurt that I've endured. And I haven't started cussing. I haven't started fighting back because I can fight. I ain't no punk. I know how to throw these. Trust me, this Marine knows how to do what needs to be done. But guess what? They that observe, watch this, y'all, blind vanities forsake their own mercy. I put all that pride kick in. And got on there and, and cussed my, my son out and threatened to kill him like he threatened to kill me. But I fell back because love has to take its course. I could have got out here and went toe to toe, step to step, and got my crew and went up against these other groups. Because I got people, I got plenty of people that can battle all these groups. But instead of throwing these, I got down and folded these into these. And I began to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Why? Because I know the attack of the adversary is to try to destroy me and this ministry. Hallelujah. That's why I couldn't stay in that bed. I had to get up out that pit. I had to get up out of the sorrow. I had to get up out of the pain. And I had to lift my head, lift up my head. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. While the king of glory is coming in. Because Yahweh is that king of glory. Now watch this. We have to understand. When our win becomes win, it puts us in a position almost of compromise. Either you are for or you are against. Either you are 
for, or you are getting, either you're going to make it or either you're going to just throw in the towel and give up and not make it. Hallelujah. But guess what? Look what he said. Luke 22 and 31. The Messiah the of Lucas says, and Yahweh said, Yahweh Shah said, Simeon, Simeon, behold, how Satan have desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. And as I begin to look at this scripture, I begin to realize that the attack that has come upon my life is not coming, watch this y'all, from the people that is performing it. Watch this y'all. Let me say that again. The attack on my life, the attack on your life is not coming from the people whom are performing it. The attack is coming from Hasatan, the devil. That's why the scripture says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. When the enemy comes in upon you as a flood, Yahweh say, Yahweh lift up a standard, a wall of protection from you. He said, I will not put too much on you that you cannot bear because he desires to sift you as we. Verse 32, Luke 22 and 32. But instead of me talking about you, instead of me putting you down, instead of me not having mercy or showing understanding, Yahweh said, but I have prayed for thee. Watch this, y'all. That thy faith fail not. In other words, guess what? The adversary, we think how Satan care about our cars and our houses. He don't care nothing about your cars and your houses. You know what the attack of the adversary is? Let me just show y'all a secrecy. Bring you into secrecy. The attack of the adversary of bringing you to that win is that he brings you to the point where Either you're going to have faith or you're not going to have faith. Either your faith going to kick in and make you whole or it's going to not be there and you're going to lose your soul. You're going to lose your life. You're going to lose your home. You're going to lose everything. Why? Because either you're going to have faith, which is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Or you're going to just fall and say, listen, I give up. I quit. I can't make it. Hallelujah. How many of y'all know that y'all not, y'all can't deal with quitting soldiers? Watch this, y'all. So he said, listen, I pray for you that your faith fail not. Remember, without faith, it's impossible. To please your home. Well, why is that? Because guess what? And this is where a lot of women make mistakes with their careers. Honestly speaking, y'all made women nurturers and men are made to be providers. But what is happening is because of society, many of our women have to go out and have careers. And sometimes when a career woman meets a businessman, there's a clash. There's a clash. There's a like a bammering ram clash. Huh? So 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 in the midst of that, things within the home begin to begin to take a struggle. Huh? No offense ladies. But y'all never told you to build your career. Y'all said, build your home. Build your houses. He didn't say build your career. Now, I'm not talking people that are single. That's why it's important to have a, 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 a man that, that, that can provide. See, Scripture said, if a man don't work, a man don't eat. huh? So, so if you ain't got a man that works, you ain't got the right man anyway. Huh? 
If you ain't got the right, you don't have a man that's taking care of you. You don't have the right man anyway. But guess what, ladies? Herein comes submission. Hallelujah. I know y'all wasn't ready for this, this curveball coming. Herein comes submission. Because guess what? Guess what? It is your duty to be submissive to your husband. Huh? Sub means under. In other words, your mission has to go under the authority of your husband. And the husband, because he loves you, as the Hamashiach loves the Kordishim of believers, watch this, y'all. He's going to make sure that he takes care of you. Scripture don't say a wise woman builds her career. Scripture says a wise woman builds her house. Hallelujah. And that's what's wrong with a lot of these marriages. They're too worldly. The world said, girl, you better go out and get your money. Have your money. Have your money. When y'all says your twain no longer is twain, but it becomes one. Uno, my friend. Watch this. Women out here so busy trying to build their careers that they're forsaken their homes and they're displeasing in the sight of y'all. Displeasing in the sight of y'all. So now, and that's why you got a bunch of single fools that's 40, 50, and almost 60 years old. Excuse me, y'all. Because those are I don't need a man concept. What you need, a woman? That's the ways of high Satan and the devil. Y'all did not create a woman just to, I don't need a man. That's a lie. And y'all didn't create the man to treat the woman like she ain't nothing. Again, when your win becomes win. A man is supposed to provide. And any woman that, don't, that won't work with her husband and let her man provide, she's an unwise woman. That's what help me means. And if you don't want to be a help me, then get out of the marriage and be divorced. And just be honest, I'm not wife material. A wise woman builds her house, but a foolish one tears it down with her hands. When your win becomes when? When you have to look in the mirror and ask yourself, what type of woman am I? When you got to look in the mirror and ask yourself, what type of man am I? A wise woman builds her house. What kind of man are you? You want to keep throwing your little thing across the town. When you got a woman at, you got a woman at home. It works hand in hand. Remember how Satan wants to have us and sift us as wheat. He's sifting marriages apart because of worldly behavior. He's sifting households apart because of worldly behavior. And I got to ask the question. When your win becomes when? Will your faith make you whole? Or will it cause you to throw in the towel? Teach today, y'all. Hallelujah. I know y'all were expecting this today. That's why we have to pray. And as we look at verse number 32 in Luke, Luke 30, 22 and 32, we have to understand. He said, but I prayed for thee. Prayed me, not only am I praying now, but I'm praying consistently. I'm praying. I prayed for thee that your faith fell. Let me tell y'all something. The grass always looks greener on the other side until you have to mow it, <laughs> until you have to seed it, until you have to cut it. The grass always looks greener on the other side, huh? Until you have to take care of it. Love you more. Yeah, that affair looks good 
when he looking at you or she looking at you. And then when you let go of what Yah's giving you as far as your wife or your husband to go for that thing across town. All of a sudden now you sitting there looking stupid because you realize that you don't have you ain't got no no rich cracker. You got a salt team. <laughs> you realize you think, oh, I'm going to leave my entrepreneur and I'm going to go with a police officer, a fireman or whatever. Huh? Oh, I'm going to leave my beautiful wife and I'm going to travel after this, this little queen. I saw a little fine, sexy thing and she ain't nothing but a, but a, but a, she ain't nothing but a, 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 a strip club trap. Hold back. I know y'all weren't expecting this. <laughs> when your win becomes win. Satan desires to have you. Sift you as wheat. He want to have you. Sift you as wheat. But Yahweh said, said, I pray for thee that your faith fails not. Huh? I know y'all weren't expecting this today. I'm praying for you. Because guess what? You won't come upon a win. Some of y'all that come upon these wins. When you look up, the one you love turns around. And cheats on you. Or that one you love turns around and just leave you. Huh? You're going to come upon that win when, when that person who said they love you ends up being your worst enemy. Why? Because they did not take the steps or the, the breakdown of what marriage is into effect. Wives, submit yourself unto your husband. The word sub means go under the mission of your husband. Likewise, you husbands love your wife like Yahweh Shai loved the assembly and gave his life for it. Huh? Love. Men. Provide and take care of your woman. Men. Watch this. Because Satan desires to have us. And sift us as wheat. He's sifting out marriages. He's sifting out relationships. He's sifting out friendships. Most of all, he's sifting us. From our faith. And that's why we've been teaching, we've been, we've been, we've been teaching strictly on spiritual affairs because the adversary wants to destroy us. He wants to kill us. Look what he said in verse 31 again. Verse 32, he said, but I pray for thee that your faith fail not. Listen to this. And when what we're dealing with today, when your win becomes win, your faith will make you whole through the word. And when thou art converted, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. When? When your win becomes win. Your faith make you whole. So in other words, when you've come to the point of when, you've gone through the when, and now you're in the version, you're in the, on a point of conversion from the when because of faith. It has now made you whole. It has now converted you. Guess what? Go and strengthen. Your brother. I was talking to my little brother, my, my spiritual brother, running the prophets, Prophet Brumley. And he began to minister to me this morning because what I'm dealing with, he's already dealt with it. He's been converted from it. So it gave me strength, gave me wisdom, gave me know how, how to deal with it. When thou art converted, strengthen your brother. Strengthen your brother. 
We have to understand, and I'm almost finished. About another 15 minutes, I'm out your way. We have to understand. He creates situations for revelation. He started with Kepha, whose surname is Peter. He started with Kepha and said, listen, Satan desires to have you and sift you as wheat. These vaccinations, these different games that they're playing, mind games, the spirit that's in the land from these false prophets, these false teachers, the worldly spirit that's mandating its norm factor in the land. These things are designed to sift you as wheat. Take all the raw, which is the breath, out of you. It's like getting punched in the stomach with a good body blow. Knocking all the wind out, out the raw. It determines again what type of ground you are. Are you stony ground? Ground of thorns and thistles? Or are you good ground? What's the difference? Stony ground, the seed is planted. The birds come by, eat them up. And, no, I, no, I'll tell you what. Stony ground is stones fall on the ground. When the wind becomes wind, kicks in, it chokes the word out of you. You forget all about the word. So now you find yourself captive to the wind factor, W-H-E-N, wind factor. Thorns and thistles is the seeds of planted, and while being slept, the birds and different things come up, eat up the seeds. And then when you come with teaching of the word, you become offended by the teachings of the truth. And you fade away. Good ground, though, which we're hoping this word fall on today, is the ground of purity. It accepts the truth, even if it's hard to understand. It accepts the hardships. It deals with things as good soldiers, good believers. And so much that when your win become win, it begins to produce. 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. I have to ask you all today, what kind of ground are you? Are you good ground, thorns of thistles, or stony ground? Watch this. He creates the situation for revelation. After, 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 Kepha, after, Kepha did what he did. After he told Kepha, Satan desires to have you and sift you as wheat. He tested Kepha. Kepha was test tested. Watch this. He was tested to the perspective of, he said, listen, thirty-three, verse 33. And he said unto him, Yahweh, I'm ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. Watch this, y'all. He thought he was good ground. But we're going to see that he wasn't. Because Yahweh I told him, when thou art converted, Strengthen your breath. When your win becomes win, when you reach the finality of your win, conversion takes place or kicks in. Now it's your job to go out and strengthen your brother and your sister through the same thing. Huh? This morning, I was able to speak to someone 
who had been in my situation, gone through my circumstances, and he was able to give me the correct path through the word that has strengthened me. So now that I'm strengthened, I'm able to come and teach when your win becomes win. Your faith may watch this. Watch this. Kepha got zealous. Kepha became extremely zealous, having a zeal not according to knowledge. And Yahweh told him, listen, you're not ready yet. You're not ready yet. He said in verse number 34, I tell thee, Kepha, Peter's name is Kepha, I tell thee, Kepha, the crop shall not crow this day before thou have three times denied me. Huh? See, when becomes when is either going to put you into the position of Yah, it's about you. Yah, you can do it. Or it's going to put you in a position where you deny him. So Kepha, he told Kepha, when that crop crow crops three times, when the crop crows three times, you're going to deny me. You're going to deny me. You're going to let me go. You're going to deny that I am the Messiah. You're going to deny because when your win became win, your faith didn't make you whole. Your faith was not there, and henceforth, you denied me. Now, remember, this was all a setup. <laughs> I'm almost finished, y'all. This was all a setup. Kiefer, after he failed the test, after when the wind became wind, his faith didn't make him whole. Huh? How many of us, that something came up on us so unexpected that we failed the test? So, he failed the test. He felt so bad. Now remember, 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 many times when things don't work out the way we think they should work, what is the first thing that we do? We go to what we're familiar with. Huh? What do you mean? I'm, I, y'all, y'all, excuse me, because I, I feel the Ruach are teaching on me today. In other words, when a person is in a relationship and the relationship don't go the way they expect it to go, right? Watch this, y'all. Instead of them praying, Fasting, coming together, they go back to what they're familiar with. And a lot of times, what they go back to is their old lifestyle. Huh? Hanging with that old crew, doing the same thing you used to do. Why? Because now, you, when the wind became wind and the tough got going, you didn't get going. You quit. You said, ah, forget it. I messed up. I can't do this. Hallelujah. Peter was there. So what did he do? According to John 21, 3 through 4, he went back to his old ways. Huh? You know why? Uh, I'll just use me. I will not cheat on my wife. It's because I can't stand, I wouldn't be able to stand the guilt before Yahweh. And I wouldn't be able to stand the guilt to look her in her face after I have cheated and allowed another female to touch me physically. Peter was in denial. Peter quit. So what did he do? Oh, 
Okay. What did he do? What did he do? He quit. He said, I'm not doing this no more. Man, I ain't dealing with this stuff no more. I thought I was ready. I thought I was, a, I, I literally thought I was ready. So what did he do? He went back to what he was familiar with. He went back to what he was familiar with. It's open publicly now. He went back and went fishing. <laughs> Watch this, y'all. So many times when we come to our win and the win is not advantageous for us, we go back to what we're familiar with. Same old crowds, same old antics, same old things. In the club, in the parties, gambling, whatever your vice used to be. Some go back to getting high, smoking weed. He went back to what he was familiar with. And that was being a fisherman. Now, according to scripture, he caught absolutely nothing. Now, why is that, why is that so incredible? The scripture says he was such a masterful fisherman. He was such a masterful fisherman that Yahweh Shah said, listen, you will no longer be a master fisherman of fish, but now you will become a master fisherman of men. So he thought that his failing with his win meant that he was supposed to turn around and go back to being a fisherman. But remember, when your win becomes win, W-H-E-N becomes W-H-E-N, your faith through the word will make you whole. It will make you whole. When your win becomes win. Hallelujah. I often ask the question. I often ask the question. What was the difference between what Kepha did and what Judas did? Watch this, y'all. Stay with me. Stay with me. I'm almost done. What was the difference between what Kepha did and what Judas did? One denied Messiah, and Messiah said, Messiah said, the day that you deny me, I will deny you. And one betrayed Mashiach. Both of those were very, very extreme, extremely offensible actions. When the wind came upon Judas, his faith didn't make him whole. When his wind became wind, he sold his soul and he sold his life out. For some money. Watch this, y'all. And when Peter's, Kepha's win became win, he denied the Messiah. Hallelujah. Some of y'all are right on the verge of your breakthrough. And the reason why you haven't received your breakthrough is because you are denying the Messiah. You're denying the Almighty. What do you mean I'm denying? You're denying it because you're trying to fix it. Instead of letting y'all fix it. You're trying to fix the marriage. Instead of letting y'all fix it. You're trying to fix the person. Instead of letting y'all fix the person. You're trying to fix the situation. Instead of letting y'all fix it. You're trying to pay people back. 
instead of letting y'all fix it. He said, vengeance is mine. I shall repay. Shall means I'm, it's guaranteed that I'm going to take care of it. And I can take care of it way better than you can. So when the win becomes win, we try to take care of it and we fail. And in the midst of failing, we become disoriented. We become discouraged. We become dislocated. We become discollaborated. Dis Y'all know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> because we try to fix it. Keeper thought that he could fix it. But Yahweh shall have told him, you ain't ready. But when your win becomes win, your faith is going to be So now, Kepha was distraught, upset, hurt. He denied the Mashiach. He went fishing, didn't catch nothing. But guess what? Guess what? As we read further down the road, Judas committed suicide. Judah, Judas committed suicide. But Kiefer held on to see what the end is going to be. Kiefer held on because he realized that when I am converted, my faith is going to make me whole. Watch this, y'all. So now, Judas killed himself. Yo, Judas killed himself. Kepha now holds on. And now, the next time we see, oh, brother Kepha, brother Peter, we see him in the upper room. We see him in the upper room. Now he's under the umbrella of another win. And that win is when that spirit come upon you. Watch this, y'all. You're going to have power. And you will be witnesses of me in Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Huh? Remember, he denied Mashiach. He quit. But the when was not finished with him yet. So now, when, remember the word when means at that time, at that point, at that time, or at that point. So when his when later came, his when came upon him at the day of Shavuot, Pentecost, in the upper room. And all of a sudden, because he didn't give up, watch this, y'all. He didn't give up. Hallelujah. He didn't quit, even though he took a break. Remember, Jonah said, they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercies, but I will sacrifice unto thee. Even though I denied you, Mashiach. Even though I stepped away from you, Mashiach. Even though I stopped doing ministry, Mashiach. Hallelujah. I still forsook my vanities. Said, it's not about me, Keeper. It's not about me. It's not about me failing. But it's about me getting to my destiny. Because remember, he creates the situations for revelation. He created that situation because Keeper had a zeal in him. He had vanity in him. And Yahweh Shah had to show him himself. He had to show him the vanity that was inside of him. Many times we're going through things and wind comes upon us because Yahweh Shah wants us to see that we have too much vanity inside of us. So now, the win, 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 the win has come now. So now, he's no longer lifting his head down, but now he's lifting his head up. And now we see him again. We see him again, but we don't see him in his failing state. We don't see him in his state of failing. We see him now at the day of Shavuot, the day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. Waiting. The word tarry means to wait. He's waiting now because now he understands that, listen, this time, when my when becomes when, 
my faith is going to make me whole through the word. So now, Kiefer, surnamed Peter, began to be found again in Acts, the second chapter. As the rock, Hakadash, the rock, Rawak, Hakadash, hallelujah, begins to come in. The languages change. All the different nationalities that is in this particular setting, at this particular place now, all of a sudden this noise comes out and we hear grumblings and we begin clarities of tongues and languages being spoken and, and the people are marvel. They try to say, but wait a minute, what's going on? How is it that we hear the word of Yahweh in our own language, huh? So, so, so now, 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 remember, remember Peter said, listen, I'm ready to go with you unto death. I'm willing to go with you, uh, uh, unto death and to the kingdom. So, but, but, but remember, Yahweh said, say, listen, you're not ready yet. And the reason why you're not ready yet, Kepha, is because you're not able to withstand that the high Satan is going to bring upon you because you don't have the rock, Hakadash, the raw rock, Hakadash, watch the show. So now, he's now, Hallelujah, now, now he's in the midst now. The atmosphere has changed. Now he's no longer amongst those, praise Yahweh, that's trying to get him. So, so, so now, so, so now, so now, so now, watch this. So now, so now, scripture says, verse 14, verse, thir verse 13 says, verse uh, 12 says, Acts 2 and 12 says, and they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what mean this? How is it that all these people, we all these different nationalities around is hearing the same word in our language. What is all this meaning? Others, verse 13 said, mocking said, these are men full of new wine. That's just, but Kepha, remember the one that denied Messiah, Mashiach? The one that went fishing and didn't catch nothing? The one that had to repent? One that had to drop his pride? And realize I didn't have it. I didn't have it. I wasn't prepared. But let's watch this. But Kepha, standing up with the 11, lifted up his voice and said unto them, You men of Yadia and all that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Yoel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, said Yahweh, that I will pour out my rock upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants, and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my rock, Hakadash, and they shall Nava. Nava in Hebrew means prophesy. So now, that Peter that quit, gave up, went back to his old ways, couldn't stay in his old ways because he was not successful. Now we see that same Kepha now. Not ready to chop nobody's head off. Not ready to chop a person's ear off like he did for those that tried to snatch your house shot. Now we see Kepha that's full of the raw Kakadash. <laughs> we see now that Kepha that is full of the word. How you know he's full of the word? Because he just gave us Yoel 2 and 28. Kepha, full of the word. Because remember, his win. Now became when. And now his faith has made him hurt. So now, guess what? That he's been truly converted. Guess what he can do now? Strengthen the brother. This was the beginning of a great move of Yah. Because the when became when. And now Kepha's faith made him whole. Well, he, will no, he no longer failed. He no longer denied, but he stood up boldly through 
through the Ruach HaKadosh and spake. Thus said Yahweh. Again, when your win becomes win, your faith will make you whole. We coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. We are gonna make it. And by faith, we've already made it. Huh? We have to understand, we serve the great I am. We serve the Aya Asha Aya. We serve the most high Yah. In my clothes. When your win becomes win, your faith will make you whole through the word. And when the way you know it's making you whole through the word is because now your win becomes easier. Your win becomes more accessible and more transmittable. You're able to move in the midst of it. Watch the show. And, 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 and as you move in the midst of it, you're able to move because you know be that your connection is there with the Most High. And you begin to decree and declare, my last scripture, Psalms 27, 1 through 4. Yah is my life. And my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Yah is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When, when, at that point, at that time, when the wicked, even my foes, came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Though a host should be encamped against me, my heart should not fear, for thou, for that my heart should not. Fear. The war should arise against me. And this will I be confident. Watch this, y'all. One thing have I desired of Yahweh that, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the presence of Yahweh all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of Yahweh and to inquire in his presence. Verse 5. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle shall he hide me, and he shall set me upon a rock. And now mine head shall be lifted up above all mine enemies round about me. Therefore I will offer in his presence sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto Yahweh. So when we're dealing with your wind becoming wind, your wind will take you to a place of victory of refuge, of worship, of being in the presence of the Almighty Himself. Hallelujah today. Hallelujah today. Praise God today. Father, we thank you today for every word which was spoken, every word that was brought forth. We thank you today for just allowing us to be in your presence one more time. We thank you today for being able to sit behind this sacred desk, speaking unto your sacred and holy people. We thank you today, Yah, for the move of the Rawak Kakadash. How you move it not by might, nor by power, but by the Rawak Kakadash. Father, we thank you today for just being who you are. We lift you up on high because you are the Almighty Yel Shaddai, Yel Roah, Yel Nisi. You are who you are. And we bless and lift up your holy name. Father, remember your people out in Facebook land, everywhere. Every city, state, county, municipality, wherever they may be, country, remember them today, Father. We pray this in your righteous name. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Because thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. You are our shepherd, and we shall not. And we praise your name. Remember those who are sick and shut in. Remember those who are dealing with habits. Remember those in homeless shelters. Remember those in nursing homes. Most of all, remember those, hallelujah, that's in the hospital rooms, oh yeah. Send forth your healing virtue. Send forth your deliverance virtue. Send forth your praise virtue. Send forth your worship virtue. And we will this day be so careful to give your name praise, hallelujah, and give your name glory. In the name of your house, Shah and our coming king. Now please, let the words of our mouth, meditations of our hearts, be acceptable in our sight. Oh, Yah, our strength and our redeemer. And we say, 
Hallelujah. 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 Yah be praised. Yah be magnified. Again, thank you all for being with us. Praise Yah. In this powerful, powerful teachings today, study today on when your win becomes win, your faith will make you whole. We thank Yah for the visitation of the Rarak Hakadash. How he moved today, not by might, but by power. We believe that this helps somebody. We believe that this is going to help someone, especially when this market of these and this mandatory vaccination is placed in place. Hallelujah. To y'all be the glory today, y'all. To y'all be the glory. To my YouTube family, again, thank you for taking out your time to spend with us on this great Shabbat. We say Shabbat Shalom to all of you all. We say uh, Yah's peace and mercy be with you. Tune in on next week, next Tuesday, in our Iron Sharpens Iron class, formerly known as our New Beginners class. And we will see you on next week. Y'all bless you, YouTube. Love you very much. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.